Welcome to Ask Me Anything, featuring spiritual medium and psychotherapist Kelly White. Hi, everybody. I am spiritual medium Kelly White, and welcome to Ask Me Anything. Tonight is going to be a really special show. And I have to tell you, I was a little concerned about my special guest because we've had a snowstorm and I didn't know if he was going to make it here because my special step, uh, guest is actually upstairs. So I'm so excited that he's here. But first, I want to say hi to everybody. And um, let's say hi, Kathy Shelton. Hi, Sue Clifford. Hi, Heidi. Hi, Ian. Hi, Tom. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Lori. It's going to be a really special show, everybody. Hi, Tammy from... Alberta, Canada. Hi there. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Anne Margaret. Yeah, we're going to hear some tunes. Don't worry. It's going to be a uh, Theo's in the house. That's true. Theo's in the house it's going to be so exciting. Um, but before we start, I'm not going to do astrology today. Uh, next Monday, I'm going to be doing our both sites now and beyond with James, and we're going to do our yearly prediction show for 2023. So you'll get a whole bunch of stuff on Monday night with James. Uh, that'll be fun. Hi, Tracy. Oh, it's so sweet, everybody. So nice to see you. Yeah, it's we're having a white Christmas for sure. Oh, my gosh. So what I want to do first, I want to talk about something that somebody asked me about uh, earlier today, and I think it's really important. And then I'm going to bring on our special guest in, in a few minutes. But I want to talk about uh, Stephen uh, Twitch boss who completed suicide yesterday. And I want, really wanted to address that because I know a lot of therapists are addressing that. And I see suicide on different levels because I'm a medium. So I work with the families who come to me and the loved ones who come to me after it's, it's a situation. And um, that's always, um, it's painful. It's really hard. It's, it's difficult for these families, awful actually. But I do want to talk about it from a therapy standpoint because what happens is somebody is in deep pain and they may feel that there's no way out. And it's what I've always tried to do whenever I work with anybody who is suicidal is I've always tried to change the dial on the brain. Like um, I had a woman that was going to complete suicide. I mean, literally going to complete suicide. And I said to her, I don't know what made me say this, but I said, you know, if you ever do that, I I'll never work again. And she said, you, you wouldn't? Why? And I said, because I wouldn't be able to get over the trauma. And it was in that realistic moment that kind of switched her brain. And she said, oh, my God, Kelly, I can't do that to you. I'm sorry. And then she, she never, I mean, she may have had the thoughts, but she didn't do it. So the idea for me when I work with somebody who's suicidal is kind of to switch the brain. Because often what I hear from the other side when they've completed suicide is that if they, they wish they could have just waited a day, like tomorrow will be a better day. Tomorrow will be better. So I feel that, and I did not know Twitch. I know of him. I did not know him. I He must have been in huge pain. I mean, uh, deep pain. And with people, I heard a statistic today that said that people wait 11 years to get into therapy because they just kind of push, push it down, uh, their depression or their anxiety or their suicidal thoughts. And that's probably accurate. And in the black community with black men, it's probably even greater. And it's very sad. And I, I worry because of the doors that it opens up with suicide. On the other side of that, I um, feel that it, this is a wake-up call, again, to many people out there. If you are in pain and you're suffering, please, please, please um, call the 911, uh, the suicide hotline. Please do that. There are people there that will help you through it, okay? And I've had to use that line, that number with people many times. So please use it, okay? So I, that's really what I wanted to say about him. And we'll send a lot of prayers to, to him because that was a, that's a hard thing. And um, to his family, certainly here, okay? So anyway, at this point now, what I want to do is I want to talk to you about my my special guest because my special guest, my special breath. <laughs> My special guest is my brother, Theo Katzman, and he's my special guest. He's my, he's everything to me. He's so important in my life. And before I bring him on, though, I want to tell you about him. And then we're going to play a clip from one of his songs. Okay, so let me tell you about Theo. So Theo was born um, in New York, 
and he's a, an American multi-instrumentalist. He's a singer, he's a songwriter, and he's a producer based in Los, or he was based in Los Angeles. He's no longer based in LA, but he certainly works a lot in LA and all over the world. His musical style is a fusion of pop, jazz, funk, and indie rock. He's a founding member of the funk band Wolfpack, which I have to tell you, they sold out Madison Square Garden and has contributed to the works of several artists as songwriter and a producer. Uh, Theo's released three studio albums with his fourth album coming out now in January. And he has a big tour coming up. I think we're gonna, he's gonna tell us, but I think it's in March, which will be hit, hitting cities near you. And um, it's, he's just an incredible, incredible soul, actually. You'll still see what I mean. And so I was, I was hoping, uh, Renee, can you play the first song, the clip one that we have? This is a song of Theo's that, well, you'll get a flavor for Theo and who he is and what he's about. And I guarantee your soul will be moved. Um, if the song is called, What Did You Mean When You Said Love? And if you could play that. <laughs> What did you mean by love? Is that the word you meant to whisper? With kisses down her neck love. What did you mean by that? And what did you expect would happen? She pat you on the back, stand up and start slow clapping on love. What did you mean by love, love, love? I think you meant like you strongly, yeah. Unless you meant just your body just enough to stay But not enough to fall Instead of giving up What did you mean by love?
And everybody, I'd like to introduce you to my brother, Theo Katzman. What's up? Hi, <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. Me too. So honored to be here, Kelly. Oh my mm. gosh. I mean, you just barely made it too. I'm so glad you did yeah. in the snow. Glad I made it too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, honey. Wow. Well, there, we have so much to talk about. Uh, yeah. Where would you like to start? Well, first of all, thanks for having me. Thanks for playing that oh. song. Um, I love that song. I love it too. And I, it's, it's funny because the word love and Ah, there's so many ways to, to go right now. I appreciate everything you, you said about um, suicide earlier. And I would actually love to talk a little bit about, at some point, talk about um, the cold water uh, immersion therapy stuff that I've been doing with the Wim Hof method and the, the breathing and the cold exposure, because I couldn't help but you know, notice when you're talking about the suicide reality for so many people. And on that retreat that I did this summer with Wim Hof, where we did this breath work and then we did ice bathing. And that's what he's well known for. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. um, it's a method of um, mental preparation, breath work, and cold exposure. And I heard, I don't know, 12, 15, 20, many people on that retreat say that they were suicidal wow. and then they found the cold water. Well, you know, it's interesting. Do you yeah. think it's because it puts you in the body? Uh, yes. It, it puts you in the body. It puts you in touch with death in a very real way, physically. So you Even, can, you almost have that experience on some level then. I, I feel that I, I have gotten quite close to that. Um, in like a 15 minute ice bath, for example, the first time that I did that, I had like a life changing. I mean, I saw the white light. I saw an oval open in the sky. I started to go into it and then I went into it and then I was still alive. Um, so be, but the body doesn't know yeah. like, or, or, or it does, but the, the body was, my body was saying like, it was okay. shutting down. Maybe you're ready to go. It was like, you're, you're surrendering, but I, I experienced my end of life regrets. Um, and they were actually really simple. What were they? Um, they were, I didn't mean to not go for it. Oh, that's huge, Theo. I didn't mean to let my perception of what other, what I think people think of me, hold me back from going for it. Yeah. And I didn't mean to not open my heart to a woman. Oh. Those were my three. Now I have, I, I am going for it. I, I'm working on the perception of, you know, and I, and I've been in romantic relationships. So, but it was like, so I know I'm doing the things, but it was like the mo it was a, it was a real mm -hmm. concrete message from God, from my, from me. Yeah from yeah. the greater universal thing through the ice. And I left that ice bath like, well, I know what I got to do now. So it I, gave you really clear direction. Extremely clear. And it's kind of, le I mean, I know that I, I still, you know, life is challenging. There's, there's yeah. struggle every day, mm -hmm. but I have felt since that moment that, and, and I try to do this practice every day, the deep breathing and the, and, and the cold water exposure today, I, you know, I couldn't get into an ice bath, so I had to take a cold shower. But like yesterday I was in um, a part of Wisconsin that had a river that was below freezing. And we actually have a river here. <laughs> and, and you know what I'm going to be doing tomorrow morning? Oh my God. I'm going to get into it. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you can know, do it <laughs> Yeah, safe, safely, by the way, yeah. you know, like you don't want to just recklessly, this isn't about being reckless. Um, it's a very, it's a very specific practice. There's a, a preparatory protocol for breathing that you do before you go in the water. And there's a way you breathe when you're in the water. So you, we're not, we're not risking our lives here, yeah. but what we are doing is we're putting our body in a situation that forces the mind to completely, you can't, you can't even have a mind in the, in that level of cold for that. So there's long. no negative thought. You, you move through that. And then you, you have to find the place where your body accepts the pain of it. 
and you have to surrender. If you try to be tougher than the ice, you snap. And when people snap, they go, yeah. they, they have like a convulsive, um, thing and, and, you know, it's, it's scary and they get, they get sheet white and the whole thing, sure. like you can go into hypothermia, but the, the funny, not funny, but the interesting thing is in my experience, and I've seen this happen in the retreat, a guy who was totally snapping the first day, eight minutes in the ice, everybody and the, all the instructors had to go around him, like help him through it. Mm. He was, he was, and he was sheet white. Okay. The second day was 12 minutes in the ice. And I, I, I was in a different bath from him. So I didn't see him what he did third day. I said, Hey man, I'm going to do this with you. I, I'm here for you today. And he said, thanks brother. And then we went in the ice and about three minutes into it, I opened my eyes and he's just like, totally so calm, had, smiling at me. surrendered. Full pink pigment. Oh, wow. It was like, not only had he surrendered mentally, but his body had adjusted from right. 48 hours prior. Wow. So the body, you know, the, the principle here is that we, we, we evolved over long time and we had to be exposed to a wide range of temperatures in the cold direction um, because, you know, we didn't used to have clothing or we had minimal clothing or we had to bathe ourselves in nature because there wasn't, you know, 78 degree <laughs> climate controlled everything and so our body has the physiology to withstand this cold and not only withstand it as we now as i've experienced and many who have tried this method of experience is like this isn't about surviving it's it's about thriving when you get into those cold temperatures that force your body into a state where you go <sighs> And you have to like depart from the mind. You have to depart from negative thought. You can't be anywhere but pure present. But present, yeah. And as you know, and people who have, I'm not, I'm not. There's many portals to this kind of presence. You know, some yeah. people meditate. I love meditate. You know, full support for meditation. There's, there's many. It's not like this is the one only way. There's many ways, um, and meditation is an incredible way. Um, but this thing is is one of the ways to get people into pure presence. And when you're in pure presence, you, there's nothing but love. There's nothing but strength. There's nothing but peace. So it's like, what was I worried about? Right. You know what Let I mean? Let me ask and, you about that. So, did, did it help yeah. you release trauma? Oh yeah. I mean, I, I, I cried. I cried very deeply. Um, I, screamed at some point you know i have felt like a scream just rip through me and sometimes people and, and you see people in the ice and they, and they might be having like a they might be screaming like as if they're you know it's tremendous uh, like you know and you think it's oh my god they're in physical pain but when you ask them they go no no it's mo emotional oh. Oh, emotional it's emotional God. pain it's not it's yes the physical pain is there but because what you're you're touching death i, I believe i mean they don't they don't tell you that on the advertisement they're not like <laughs> hey come touch death <laughs> you know and i don't they, they i i do they they know this they being yeah. wim hof and his and his um and his team I team think. but and I, i'm not they're not hiding anything from you i think it's pretty clear you know people are scared of the of cold and for good reason it's it's but it's not to be feared it's to be respected and what i now feel is like it's in the same way that there is no dark without light and vice versa and yin yang like other this is this is not my idea duality duality this mm -hmm. is the reality yeah duality is the reality um on this in this dimension yeah well there you go so these things exist um together and they, they, they cannot be find, defined without the other. Mm -hmm. And so we live in a culture, this Western modern culture that I, is the only one I can speak to, that has gotten sort of advanced enough with our technology that we can actually live in a way that we actually like fully avoid any notion of death, even though 
the one thing we all know for sure is that every single one of us is going to die. There's, and we I have actually, time limit. Yeah. I prefer to say like, you are going to be killed by life. I know that's a little intense, but it's like, <laughs> under, understand this. If we don't, so, so here we are wanting pleasure, wanting to avoid pain. And so we go, oh, that's, well, I don't want to talk about death. Okay, no problem. It just means you don't get to talk about life very much then <laughs> because they're the same thing. They're, they're two sides of the same coin. And so it's like without, without an intimacy with trying to, and a lot of these spiritual practices from what I've seen, they're about, they're really trying to ground you in the realization of impermanence. Yes. Like you will die. Don't get, uh, yeah, attachment. Yeah. Yes, yes. It's mm -hmm. like attachment is not the deal. Now, it's a thing we all struggle with and we'll, not, you know, I'm, we all do Being it all a human is hard. Being it's human difficult. is hard. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So these practices are geared to try to get the human mind to really realize that this thing on this plane is temporary. And people are so, I mean, myself included, I'm not above anyone or anything. I'm fully a human here, 100%. People, myself included, are so unwilling, just want to push away what they perceive as negative, bad, death equals bad. But as a result, I now feel that avoidance is impacting your ability to live a full life. Absolutely. Fear it, impacts everything. And a, exactly, mm -hmm. for sure. The and fear, ultimately, but even, fear of death. But did you know number one is fear of speaking publicly? I've heard that. Number and one, I have a theory on why is this is. Two. Tell me, because you're being exposed? Well, because to be cast out of the Stone Age village in the Stone yeah. Age yeah. is death. Is death. Yeah. Because no human can survive the elements and right. do all the tasks needed to, right. we're a pack animal. So we have a highly tuned, what you might call like a sociometer or like, well, how, how do people, how do people perceive me? Cause it's like, yeah, in the stone age, if somebody didn't really like your vibe, you might get like kicked out, which means you're, you're out like, of the pack, which dead. means you're dead, <laughs> which exactly what it means. But yeah. here we are. But the fear, the reason they have more of a fear of public speaking of de than death is because death is too abstract to them in modernity. Whereas public speaking, we still go like, no, I don't yeah. want, what if they don't like the way I think? Right, because then I'll be like kicked the out and I'll die. What yeah. if they don't like my song? But yeah. the joke is like, <laughs> dude, and I've, I've struggled with this as hard as anyone ever. I, I know it might be hard to believe because I am a professional artist who's, you know, Well, wait, doing my hold song. that thought because somebody actually wrote a question for you, named, a guy named Chris ward and this is this and this is the question for you theo chris mm -hmm. ward he's a huge fan of yours he says how much doubt have you experienced in your musical career theo he said i'm a young musician studying music tech and i experience doubt about the success or survivability of my future constantly i i really think i have been as far into the depths of depression and <laughs> doubt in the realm of my life my career and whether or not i'm any good at all mm -hmm. i think i've gone as hard as anyone's ever gone in that realm like I, i'm i'm certain of it so chris in other words i would say yes i experience it all the time i experience it every day on a level but the, what i can say now is that doing it is the calm and mm -hmm. this is the trick this is the weird thing is like there is no guarantee your your fear is founded chris what is the what are the chances of survivability in this with full devotion i i can't tell you i really can't i can barely i'm going on tour in the spring it starts at the end of march it's going to be mostly basically march 29th to, through may 14th or something but i have no idea if people are going to show up and if they don't show up i'm going to be tremendously screwed financially <laughs> to be completely honest with you tremendous like i'll have to sell everything i own type of thing because that's how much it costs to get the bus and to get the guys and to get but the thing uh, on the other side of that i know some extremely well-known musicians that uh you know are icons that mm -hmm. had that same fear with you 
I know. It was a constant fear. Everyone does. So mm -hmm. what we need to start to learn to do is to use fear as a compass. Mm -hmm. It's like your fear, you can all, you can kind of, with enough practice, it, it is possible to start to notice the difference between intuition and fear. Yes. Like, yeah. You know, it's, a, I don't know how to define it, but, and it's not easy, but with enough practice, you can start to go like, I'm scared of this thing. And I'm still going to do it. But, and, and that means I must do it. I must do it. Because yeah. of the way in which I'm scared of it. Like if somebody mm -hmm. said, Hey, do you want to give me all your money and bet it at the casino? I would, I'd say no. And if, and if for some reason I decided I was going to do that, I would be scared, but that would be because it's a stupid idea. It's, I'm not supposed to do that. There's, but right. you know what I mean? Yeah. I would know intuitively that that's, that's not well, a good use the other of my... thing is, Theo, you are passionate about your, your, your music. You're passionate about it. And I it am, comes I out in your music. Yeah, totally. I'm, I'm, I'm gift. I'm my, my gift, I think is my passion. I've been gifted. Yeah. Um, our dad and, yeah. and my mom, both, you know, very passionate people. Our dad, our dad had to be one of the most passionate so humanities I, ever I, created. So I'm the oldest of four. Theo and I have a, a sister and a brother in between, and Theo's the youngest. So we have the same father. We had different mothers. Both mothers were incredible. My mother was incredible. And Judy, my stepmother, your mother is incredible. And our father, so I had dad on the front end of everything, and you had him at yeah. the at the back end. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I totally, totally. Our agreement on the other side was probably like, I'll take them up front <laughs> and you take them in the end. And we're each going to need to help each other with that yeah, one. Yeah, <laughs> 100%. But my, one thing about our dad was, would you agree with the statement? He was the most authentic person you ever met. 100%. Ever, to, most to, authentic. And our like dad. Uncomfortably so. Like he, I, if he didn't I, like you, you'd know oh, immediately. No. That it was, was it. It was rough. I'd be yeah. like, dad, you can't tell my, you know, I'm 12. Yeah. Like you yeah. can't oh. tell John, you know. <laughs> Oh my God. All I ever wanted was normal. Yeah. I mean, but the other side of that is he loved so deeply and I always knew how loved I was mm. and that love and that passion with me and taught me so much about my own passion that that's how I'm able to do what I do. He was, he was so, he loved deeply. Theo, he loved oh, you yeah. deeply. Wouldn't you agree with that? I, I mean, absolutely. he was such, he, the guy was all heart on so many levels, all heart. complicated as fuck. Yeah. So complicated. <laughs> yes. Unbelievably yes. complicated and yeah. a jazz musician. He's my father. Our father was a professional jazz musician. And mm -hmm. I'll tell you something funny, Theo. And I don't, and we're going to go into the story. Yeah. I want to tell her the story about the next song. But yeah. one of the things I don't know if you know this, and maybe you do, but um, our father was always fiercely on time. <laughs> fiercely on time. Like, it, it, as you said, if you said, you know, be there at nine, he'd be there at 830. And what? He'd be fuming. If the he'd car, be pissed. If, he'd be, he'd be yeah. in the car at 830. Yeah. And he'd already be bugged. And yeah. it's like. I thought you said nine. <laughs> he'd yeah. be in the car at eight thirty, and he'd be pissed because he knew he knew I was going to be late. Oh my god! It's he it was he was so complicated with that. But yeah. do you know why? I know why. I know no, what happened. Tell me do you want to know why? So Heck our yeah. father was a jazz, a professional jazz musician. So I grew up a trumpeter. So I grew up. My first language is jazz. I I no could if, if I could understand them, I can understand anybody. And 100%. there's because these guys, these jazzers. We're from another planet. They're not from anywhere near here. They think differently. They're they barely sensitive. spoke English. To they be barely honest. I mean, and they'd be like, "Dig, you know." Not. They'd have all this other words, and you'd be like, "People would go like, what is he oh, saying?" And I always like, oh, had I to interpret. I yeah, always yeah. had to interpret. You know, I was like a, a jazz interpreter when I met yeah. Don, who is a professional musician. He said, "Oh, I'm so glad that you <laughs> you're not a musician." He said, "I'm just glad that you speak it." Because yes. I speak it, yes, you know, and totally. it's from the heart. So, uh, and so anyway, dad, the reason this happened is our father was on the Johnny Carson band for the people that remember Johnny Carson. And he was in the band, he's a trumpet player in the band. And he would always come late. Did you know this, Theo? He would Whoa. come late. I'm going to surprise you with this. So one day, I think it was Doc Severinsen said, that's enough. If you come late again, the next time you come late, you have to pay every one of these musicians. Wow. And he got there late and he had to pay. Wow. After that, he was never late again. Stakes make the game, baby. Amazing. Right? So That's amazing. Was, so I have to share with you this next song that we're going to talk about because it's so it was so important in my life and it was so important. And it's such a spiritual story. Yeah. It's it's amazing story. But beautiful. So my mother, 
um, my parents were married maybe 20 years, if, if I think 20 years, yeah. and the long divorced. But when my mother was dying, I asked her, I said, Mom, who do you want to come and get you? Because when you pass over, you are greeted. There's somebody there that comes and picks you up. You're, you never die alone. It's actually not possible. So I said, Mom, who would you like to come and, and get you, pick you up? You know, And she said, I don't know. And I said, well, maybe your father, because I knew she liked her father. She said, no, not my dad. I said, well, do you want this one? No, this one, no. She thought about it, and she, she said, I want your father. I want Lee. I said, what? You want Lee to come and get you when you pass? Because dad had already passed four years before this. And she said, yes, that's who I want. And I said, uh, why? And she said, you've been divorced for 50 years. She said, uh, because he was the most fearless man I'd ever known. And my mother feared death. A well-known psychologist, she feared death. Yeah. And so Makes I sense. said to her, okay, mom, dad's going to be there. So I leave mom's house and I get in my car. I've gone the 405 freeway. The 405 in Los Angeles is a nightmare. And I'm in the car and I'm stuck in traffic. And I'm like, dad, look, you have to do me this favor. You have to be there with get mom when mom passes. You have to be there for her. You have to be there. Please, please tell me you'll be there for her. So I took a picture of this. So here's what happened. My radio went on. And Renee, show, um, here was this, the proof from dad. If you could show that picture, Renee, wait till you see this. Do you see this? So oh, yeah. I'm on the 405 and look at this, Theo. It says the station is called Escape. Okay, dad, our father was known as the escape artist. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he was like Houdini. Like you turn around, he'd be gone. So we always called him the escape artist. So it's on some station I never listened to. The name of his band was the Baja Marimba band. That was his band. And their famous song was Windy. And that's picture that I took a picture <laughs> of it to believe it because it was so unbelievable. That's awesome. Isn't that awesome? So Great. I get to my house and then Theo was coming over for dinner that night. Mm -hmm. And I said, Theo, I want to tell you something. And I tell him and, and my mom loved you so much. I loved her. And too. you loved her. I mean, mm -hmm. she was wonderful. And you said, um, I tell I'm telling you the story. I said, she wants our dad to come and get her. And he goes, what? Well, you went like this. What? Like, yeah. love? Wait a minute. You can still love somebody after this? After you've been divorced? And you were like, the, the whole concept surprised you. And yeah, then Don, just felt and, like, yeah. wow. Yeah. Yeah. And then Don and I were like, yeah, of course you can. And then you said, I'll be right back. And yeah. here's what happened. You went into the bathroom. I'm making dinner. Yeah. 20 minutes goes by and Don goes, is, is Theo okay? Is he sick? So I don't know. I, I have no idea. You rushed out of the bathroom and you said, can I go to the piano? You went to the piano and you start playing this song. Yeah. And can you describe what happened to you? And then we'll play the song. Yeah, that's yeah, unbelievable. So this that, really... The song we actually used at my mother's memorial. Mm, yeah, yeah, man. I so. So the thing with songwriting for me is like I can never remember. Doing it which might sound crazy. I like remember the moment before I remember the moment after I'll be like, Oh, I'm going to go sit down to write. But when it actually starts to come through, it's like, it's like a blackout or something. It's like, I don't um, really know what, what happened, happened. And, and yeah. so I went in the bathroom. I just felt like, have you ever seen the movie walk hard where, um, John C. Riley plays like a fake it's yes. like the Johnny cash spoof yeah. kind of <laughs> anyway, he has this theme in the movie where like, He'll go like, and it's like, he's getting a song, you know, and he right, goes, right. someone says something and he goes like, it was kind of like that. It was like, I started to have that feeling, went in the bathroom and just the whole lyric came to me like with a melody at once, which sometimes happens. And it doesn't even make sense because how could you have like three and a half minutes of like information come to you in one one download like moment yeah. kind of it yeah. you know it's like so exactly it's like a download and so i left I, I don't know i was i was in the bath i just sat alone in the bathroom because i could feel it coming and i didn't so i know you guys know me and i know you so it was like hey i'm gonna i need to bail for a sec you know and you were like yeah go go do it <laughs> and so then when i came out to the piano it was like i just had to find the chords because i had the lyrics and the melody and it was one of the fastest 
imports that like the song just came direct and yeah it was it was tremendous we all kind of went i mean i think i played it for you guys that night you it played was like, it for us at tw after 20 minutes yeah it you went like, right to the piano and you played heck? it yeah. and then i said oh my god i, I got I, can you play this? And you recorded it actually. You were in yeah. Italy or you were in Europe or somewhere when when mom, yeah. we had the mom's memorial because my yeah. mom died a month later. As yeah. a matter of fact, Theo, you were performing at the Troubadour and you surprised me at the Troubadour in Los Angeles. And mm. you said, This is for my sister Kelly. And then you played it. Yeah. And of the song for me, it allowed me to feel all the emotions that I've been holding up. And your music, Theo, allows people to really. I think you have to feel for other people. And I think you feel so deeply that it allows everybody else to feel too. And for me, it allowed me, it was like, I've actually felt my heart crack open, honest mm. to God. And I, I, I sobbed probably, oh, probably for a year because I, mm. that song just helped me. Cause you know, we lost, we lost mom. And then we also lost our, one of our godfathers, Bobby Duro, who, mm. At the same time, and Bobby yep. Duro wrote uh, Schoolhouse Rock, everybody, and that mm -hmm. was a huge one in our life. Yeah, huge. I mean, we had major losses here, but totally. this was a big one. So, would you mind if we listen to this clip? I mean, it's so yeah, amazing. Yeah, let's do it. I also wanted to say real quick the, uh -huh. just the thing about, it's like music can contain emotion in it. Like if if it is a picture of a human's emotional experience, then the song and the delivery of it and even the recording of it has the potential to contain that emotion. And so I often say like the best songs are, they're basically just like little vehicles for that. And they're a safe place for that. Yeah. Sometimes that feeling is it's, it's almost, it almost doesn't go anywhere else societally because we don't have a society that holds a lot of space for that kind of emotionality. Mm -hmm. We we're tough and we're trying to get things done and go to work and yes, sir. And whatever the whole thing. But so you have a song, a song is like where that's, that can live. And so I, I it's not just me that, that is what I aim to do, but it's like, I, I've had music do that for me. So that's the kind of music I want to make. I want to make that, that kind of music. That is the kind of music you do make. I mean, you, cool. everybody <laughs> feels it. So, yeah. oh, this is interesting. Somebody asked, was that song a gift from dad? Probably. I mean, it was, yeah, it was, it was like definitely a gift from beyond uh -huh. i felt yeah, I definitely felt it come definitely yeah. and i actually could see myself in it i could imagine myself and my you know a former relationship and and thinking about it in the same way like if this person dies or i die it's like yeah i i even though it didn't work out i did trust that person more than anyone else Absolutely. like that and you yes. know yeah. And it, it was, it was, it was, so, it was so powerful because it, I was able to talk to my mom about it and be like, you know, here's how the story, and she wasn't like offended or jealous. It was like, yeah. because in the song, anyway, you'll, you'll hear it, but yes, well, that's the story of it. I mean, the story is of our father coming to pick up my mother. And his all with all of his nuances, and he yeah. had a lot. So I mean, it's it's just wonderful. So Renee, would you put this on? It's called "Darling, Don't Be Late." I'll be late. So this next song, um, I wrote it from an interesting perspective. Um, my father passed away about seven years ago. And uh, I was talking to my sister over at her house one day. Um, we have the same dad, different mom, my half-sister. And uh, her mother was dying, and we got to talking about, you know, whether they would meet up in heaven or not. Um, they hadn't seen each other in a long time. But obviously they spent a lot of their lives together, and it just got me thinking, like, I wonder if, uh, I wonder if we get to kind of keep the same personality, same uh, quirks, same clothes, maybe even the same car up in heaven, you know? I like to think we do. Anyway, this is written from that perspective. The 
Everybody's getting Kleenex right now. I mean, that mm. was uh, tissue. It's it was uh, it's amazing. Uh, Vicky Neeson says, "Wow, mm. I just lost my husband, my very best friend. This really got to me. The tears are just streaming down my fa face. So much emotion. Thank you, Theo. Thank you, Vicky. I mean, that song really does capture emotion. 
I mean, I'm tearing up thinking about it. Me too. <laughs> I, it's, uh, I know, right? I mean, we've That's been cool. through a lot together with, with your yeah. music and your music is, oh, every, and Margaret says my heart chakra just burst. I mean, that oh. really is, that captures it. Regina Joyce Clark, what a remarkable show this is tonight. Thank you both. And what a family of creative power. I'm so happy listening. Thanks, Regina. Thanks, Glad Regina. you are. Yeah, um, Sylvia Santa Cruz, what a blessed inspiration to compose that song. Definitely the dad speaking through his son. I had to laugh when I read that because it's kind of it's pretty true. I yeah. mean, our, our dad drove, always had to have a BMW. And in <laughs> fact, when he died, I think your mom, with it, with a, she totaled it up. He had 127 cars. Yeah. Oh my God! Yeah, he was and, a I car mean, freak. To be to be clear, he didn't own them all at once. He was yeah, he was. He would have I, one and then have another one. one. Get we always one. had four or five at the same time, and he was something else. He, yeah, was, he was fearless. I mean, the thing that I take mm. away from that him is to be fearless in life. To have passion and be fearless, and and the thing he didn't do was deal with his emotions, which you really talk to me about generational trauma, because his father came from Russia. And actually, it came from um, where the fighting is going on right now in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And his his uncle, my or say, would be my my great our your my, our great great uncle, our great uncle killed a Cossack. And I think Dad's Dad carried that energy of that generational trauma. I think he was such a sensitive soul. And because it, men in those days didn't believe in therapy, they wouldn't talk about it. They wouldn't do anything. He was. Uh, it was kind of caught in a time warp there with that, but you, I feel that you, you're doing releasing of trauma for our family. I, I'm, that's my aim. <clears throat> that's your aim. You know, and you said, you said he was totally fearless, but the one thing he didn't do, and that's some of the insight I've gotten is. Oh, like, that's so true. He didn't work on himself. There you go. It's he didn't like, do any work on himself. It's like <laughs> so close. So close. So close. <laughs> You know, but that's I. <laughs> well, Dini, <clears throat> he strikes again. He did not do it. But that's <laughs> like you said. There were men in that time, and I, I don't know enough about, you know, the history of everything to. Yeah, they, speak they, to it wasn't. You know, it wasn't popular. Yeah, there was no pe pe people. <laughs> yeah, and and I wonder how much just being a first generation, uh, immigrant or you know the child. Yeah. son of an immigrant into him in America where it's like maybe the first generation of no village for this family. Yeah. It's like, Hey, they had a place, they had a community. They maybe, maybe in that setting, there would have been a like, Hey, young man, yeah, talk about your, you know, come by the fire and let's talk this out. Or we don't like the way you're treating this person. Or Would I you don't say know. that your generation <laughs> does that? We're starting to. I mean, it's a really, I feel like we are, especially after the last two years or whatever, however long it's been with COVID and with all the um, just true hardship that's that's been going on for so many people and also just the general isolation. I think a lot of people got, they just snapped on a level of like, you know what, man, certain things aren't working it anymore for me. Like, and if, if you, if, if you really sit with it, it's like, Hey, how well is it working for you to like hold all the shame and guilt that you have in your, in yourself? How's that working? Right. And, you know, I, it's, I get it. It's a, it's a, it's an interesting strategy and we all try it. The first thing we do is we try that. And hopefully we don't do that for our entire lived experience because it's not the only way it has to be. I've now realized is like, you can let this stuff through emotion, mm -hmm. And yeah, it's, I, I actually feel pretty committed. I'm awakening to this now in my life, but men, I'm a man and I, I feel like I have, as a as being a man, I have a unique opportunity to talk to men because I am a sensitive man, but I also understand kind of, you know, I grew up in bro culture. I understand um, what- You never ever went in that direction. I didn't, but I- you understand it. I understand it, which is to say I can see how little the so many men are ever talked to about anything. Nothing. It's you know, I've talked to women about this. It's not an easy topic. It's it's mm -hmm. it's a very huge problem in our in our world is that like men who have no stewardship for their energy, their sexuality, their power, their strength and they have no leadership and guidance, they tend to like do things that are really harmful. Yeah. And, well, drugs, alcohol. 
Yeah, abuse, yeah. rape. Abuse. I yeah. mean, Jesus, yeah. it's get you know, it's this this is this stuff is like doesn't have to go down that way. I don't mm-hmm. I don't believe. And so mm-hmm. so it becomes kind of a tool, a doorway for for compassion or maybe even radical compassion where you go like I I want to try to help I want to try to help these these men. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, I like so on some level my my music I, well, I, I think, think what I, your music does is it opens a lot of doors for emotion. Yes. And if if that can start to trickle out for for people, that it opens I, a door for healing. I, I that's my aim. So mm-hmm. I I haven't said this like publicly, but I feel like this is an appropriate place to say it. Is like my music is for he, like for I'm healing. saying it through me as, to hopefully touch. Mm-hmm. others and and uh, promote healing and the thing i haven't said is like i'm hoping that it heals men because i'm hoping you it opens... never told me that that's no. so interesting and i i wow. love Thank i love you. i love my the women in my I life know. more than anything oh, in my life totally so it's not a, it's not an either or but it's like i think i've just noticed that after concerts it's very common for a certain kind of male human to come up to me and go like Hey dude, um, I just, I just want to let you know, bro. Um, kind of look away and go like, you know, like, um, that song you, that song you played, like, about your, about your dad, man. Like, I, I just, I, I really appreciate Aww. it, bro. You know, thank you. And then they, then they kind of scurry off, oh and it's my like, gosh. that's, that's so deep to me. I'm, I know I made a, because you made, a, you did, you, you popped yeah. in in it, you did. This that's hard. That's really hard for hard. a certain kind of guy. So where, true. Not every guy is like, hey, gushing emotion like me, like. Right. I'm, I understand now that that's more rare. I mean, I always knew it was kind of rare because I'd be in the, everyone's like, Hey, Kesman, what are you going to play baseball? Are you going to play the drums? And I, I remember like, that uh, because you yeah. were an incredible, um, uh, you did a lot of physical work. Yeah. I'm a an lot af- of, you're I'm an athlete, athlete as well. Yeah. Most, that's the other joke. It's like most of the musicians I know are actually, they're athletes. It's like a, yeah. there's something there. It's a yeah. focus. It's focused energy. Mm-hmm. It's practice. It's physicality. Music is physical as well. So a- anyway, I, I hope, I don't even hope that's a whole other con- con- topic, <laughs> but I, my aim is to, is to use my experience channel through song to hopefully have a, a safe place for this to live. And it's like, if you're a certain kind of man who's never been able to open up and you've had no one talk to you or provide a safe space in your entire childhood for your feelings. And you see some guy who kind of looks like you or is whatever, just some dude on stage and you go to the show and you, and you feel that opening like great. I mean that I'm not, I'm not trying to save anybody. I'm just trying to promote. I have feel that I have an opportunity with my work to be absolutely. I that mean, it, that could doorway. be your sole purpose, honey. That is I mean, my. We sole all purpose. have a sole purpose, and that would be yours. I, I want to help. A deep I'm here for healing. You're here, and I think that everything that you've had to go through with, you know, you had big loss early on because yeah. our father died when you were young. Mm-hmm. Well, you weren't. You were what? Early twenty seven. Mid 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 twenties. You know, I mean, that's all, early. Yeah, we've had. I've had some loss, and I've had. Yeah. I've had some heartbreak, and. I'm really oh, yeah. grateful In fact, for you it. wrote an album called Heartbreak Hits, right? It did. I did. Mean, yeah. From all the heartbreak. Yeah. In fact, I remember people said to me, did he ever get his heart healed? And I was like, I think so. Well, I, I mean, don't... yeah. I mean, I, I, this might sound weird, but like, you better pray that your heart gets broken. Like. It's true because I'm it cracks so you open. There it's you go. It cracks you open. It and then open. guess what? You're allowed to, you have other experiences. And we're all here to have lots and lots and lots of experiences. Yeah. And you want to, you know, when you're alive, when you're here, you really want to live with passion. You really want to live and you want to live with passion. Yeah. And so it opens so much for that. Def- definitely. And so this fear, if we mm-hmm. go talk about fear again, which ultimately I think is the fear of death. Yeah the root of, of all fear. And so you go down that hole far enough and you go, wait a minute. If I push that away, then I'm never going to have the real fire under my ass, so to speak of like, no, no, this is a finite life. Like on this plane, like 
you you got to go true. now. You got to go now. This could end in 10 seconds. There could be a meteor. I mean, cars cars are so incredibly dangerous. We all drive to work. It's it's insanely dangerous to drive a car. Like I'm not trying to make you feel scared about life. I'm saying life and death are are intimate. They're married. So with if we push if we push death away, then we then we effectively I feel now allow fear to totally run our whole thing. Instead of being like, I walk towards fear. If I feel a certain kind of fear, I I change it. I'm not. I'm saying this is my practice is mm -hmm. to try to. I'm saying this is if I were uh, another. I'm saying this in the in the universal sense of, of right. any person. Right. Does that make sense? Like, yes, totally. if one is to feel fear then the opportunity is to learn to fear equals you do it. I love that. So it's not, you don't, you don't get unscared and then go into an ice bath. I promise you it's scary. Every time the walk to the Creek, the walk to the river, the walk to the lake, the walk to the ice is scary. Every time that's not where the strength is. Yeah. It's you don't have to have any strength. You don't have to have any courage. You don't have to be brave. Uh, what do you mean you don't have to be brave? What I'm saying is you have to do it. And that's mm -hmm. where those things come. You go, oh, like bravery, courage, love. These things happen in presence. They, they don't happen conceptually. It's like it's very true. In conceptually, the whatever. You could get yeah. distracted away from any concept in any given moment. But when you yeah. go into the ice, can't be anywhere else. So it's a it's a way. It's like a physical analogy, like a physical analog for Facing developing your fears. intimacy with yeah. fear. Yeah, absolutely. Gosh, Dale, I and, love and that. And it's free. And I mean, you your go. cold shower is pretty much most people. Yeah. No, you're I think, right. Who are watching this show? I would imagine they have access to a cold shower. It, if somebody wanted to learn about the Wim Hof method, how would they do that? Go on YouTube, type mm -hmm. in Wim Hof method. W I M H O F. Wim Two words. Hof. His Two name words. is Wim uh -huh. and then space H O F. Wim Hof. Okay. There's a great documentary, a little mini doc, like a 45 minute documentary for free on YouTube by Vice that's like a sort of, it's from a few years ago when he was kind of starting to become more popular. And people are like, what is this guy? This guy broke the Guinness record of longest sitting in ice for what, two hours or something without changing his core body temperature. What's going on? This guy's crazy. And so it's, it's a documentary on him, but then there's a number of, um, he's got free guided breathing exercises. He teaches technique in like 10 minutes. Wow. And so I have to say, and I'm, I'm really not, I'm not getting paid for this. It doesn't matter to me that I'm not, I'm not doing this for my own benefit. I, but I really want people to know that the most but by, by far, nothing has even come close to the, this is the most calming, anxiety reducing, stress managing technique I have ever done in my life by, and, and nothing even comes close. And I'm talking about whatever, any of the, you know, tea, marijuana, mm -hmm. Whatever. Ayahuasca, any of it. Yeah, and, and I and I actually I have deep, 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 <clears throat> deep reverence for plant medicines. I have had I haven't talked about this publicly either, but I've shared it with you, Kelly. I've had like tremendously significant uh psilocybin mushroom ceremonial use experiences that helped me very much go into past trauma and unlock it released from the body. That's a real thing. And I've had that experience and I'm, I would take a bullet for that shit. Like I, oh, I, I saw you, hold, you totally shifted when you did that. Now, by Total the way, shift. this is not, this isn't drug culture. This isn't, um, this isn't like let's getting get high. high. This not that at no, all. No, no, no. You leave, you leave that shit. You never drink again. Like you don't want to drink. What are you going to drink? Like, no, 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 no. This isn't a party. And, and I don't, I don't, I'm not judging anyone who wants to party with these, with these sacred medicines, but I have to say like they are for something else. Like if you, if you go in with the medicine, it's, it's scary because again, it's facing, well, what if I lose my stuff. mind? Yeah. And I'm kind of like, you better lose your mind. I mean, your mind is, <laughs> your mind is the problem. 
But you have to learn to love your mind. And you have to learn to right. love your, what I'll call self. That word yourself is, is uh, it feels to me now, I get a sense that it's almost like a linguistics error that we put it as one word, yourself. So people mistake yourself for you, but you, it's two words. It's your self. You have a self, a self. just like you yeah. have a hand or you have yeah. a nose or you have a hat. But the self is in the mind somehow in the way of that deeper you, which the plant medicines can help you. They can put you in touch with that. And for that, I am inter eternally grateful. So I'm not, I'm not making a hierarchical comparison with any of these modalities. I think it's a huge part. It's a huge part of my story, to be completely honest. And I would tell, I would tell a six-year-old if I had to. I mean, because this is not... I'm not talking about partying. I'm, I'm talking yeah. about responsible yeah. taking ownership of your emotional landscape and your healing journey and trying your best to face what's hard for you. And I, I had a sense that there was some stuff in my past that I couldn't even, I'd get to a spot in therapy and I'd be like, yeah, I don't know why. I don't know why I'm trying to please people. Cause I, I don't actually really care what they think, you know? And then <laughs> someone would be like, well, who are you trying to get to love you? And then it's like, the tears come and it's like, dad, I'm trying to get to, even though I know how much dad loved me yeah. and he would tell me, but there was a certain thing that I struggled with as a child, which I got to go to the source of in, in one ceremony with a naturally occurring entity. That's a, a mushroom that grows from this yeah. earth that, that our species has used for millennia for this exact purpose. And now we live in this little blip of time where it's, stigmatized and illegal and there's good there's a plenty of history on why that is i think it's probably pretty obvious to people why this is a threat to many things like if you can do and so is it so is the wim hof method i mean that is the most mm -hmm. punk thing it's like i met people who were in tears talking about getting over a lifelong addiction to oxycontin and getting off all their rheumatoid arthritis medications because of the cold water therapy wow now Again, that's free. Yeah. Now, I know if you live in California, you don't have an ice bath. Maybe it's expensive. I, I'm not. I get that. Oh, well, a cold I'm, shower, you said. Yeah, but like the power yeah, of your power body of in cold yeah. water. So the all I want to say about these different modalities is that the psychedelics have been huge for me, hugely transformative. And you don't you do not do them every day. I mean, this yeah. is like. And I know people microdose. I've actually never done that, and I have no no judgment and no, and no comment. It seems like a a positive thing for a lot of people. But when you go in deep with the medicine, you you have a it's it can it's profound. So you you don't do that every day. You can't. Right. I mean, this is exhausting physically and spiritually. You wouldn't you wouldn't do that every day. You wouldn't run a marathon every day. It's kind of right. like a spiritual emotional. Oh, like, like a giant colonic. Yeah. You wouldn't do that every single day. Right. And that's why the cold and the breath work, you do, you can do that every day. Wow. So it's this thing that is as powerful, can be as powerful with enough time and a cold enough temperature and enough practice. It, it can be as powerful as a complete psychedelic experience. Like, Bam. Oh, wow. It, I really, I, I have had, like I told you with that oval and the white light, I mean, I walk, I went wow. into it. I saw my body go lift up and go in. I had a full on experience in that way. I was totally sober. And so I don't do that every day. Like I'm not doing 15 minutes a day, but I do 10 minutes a day. So I get to kind of come close enough to that. Mm -hmm. And wow. so at 15 minutes is exhausting. It's really I exhausting. can't even fathom that. Yeah. But you know, five is like, and are kind of like a wake up. Ten yeah. is like, like a workout, and fifteen is like, I'm gonna need a nap. You know, wow. so all I know, I'm kind of going off on this, but I, I just wanna, I just have to, I have to communicate, or I feel really compelled to say it's good news to share that I don't, I'm not saying this is a cure all for every ailment, but it does seem to have some profound effect on people's confidence and their and their mental health. And I will say that it is the first time in my life that I felt, and I now feel totally in touch with all, constantly a foundational confidence in my being, my physical being. There's just a confidence there. I never had that. And I'm like an athlete and I'm a rock and roll dude and I'm up there and everyone's going, wow. And it's like, 
it still ah, wasn't there. Interesting. It's possible to be totally depressed and be in that yeah. situation. And I was. Wow. Like I was, you know, remember I was struggling I, at some I point. I remember like, very well. Because I had architected this. So for whoever asked about if you have doubt, I can't remember the name. Chad, Chris. maybe? Chris. Kind of Chris. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Chris. And for anyone else out there who's trying to be a musician or do anything, it doesn't matter if it's music or just anything that you care about so much that you're not going for it because the fear of failing at it is too Right. too crazy but now you're not going for it so that so you're already failing if you right. think about it that already way already set yourself up <clears throat> so anyone in that situation i just want to share that one of the motivators for me which I, without realizing it there's the love of music that's natural that was emergent and also that was from our dad and my mom and all the, the music in the house and oh and your grandparents huge yeah musicians. <clears throat> my mom's parents are musicians as well my mom my mom has i think my mom could have been easily like, easily she, been a musician. she has the best she she has a way i'm not exaggerating she has a way better ear than i do her she's ear is amazing. crazy and she, she actually has a sing, jazz program she's amazing she and, can sing bebop lot like she's sing yeah. charlie parker solos from memory she's a freak she well, does that's your no training. <laughs> and it's amazing. And your grandfather was Albert Tipton, who was named a uh, flautist of the century by yeah, Time he, Magazine. He, yeah, he was he was a influential yeah. um so, I mean you really flutist, have yeah. the, the genetic components for musician. Totally. But it also would come in with a lot of <laughs> the other pieces of it. Well, I think the thing the thing that I that I, I, I keep saying the thing that I want to stick a landing on is seems like, oh, it's every everything I'm trying to stick a landing on. So I guess I'm <laughs> welcome to me but uh <laughs> this thing of when when there's the emergent desire to play music that is because of the love of music but then there was this desire to get love from mm -hmm. others and i didn't know how big of a motivator that had become my self-worth had become so tied mm -hmm. to the approval that i was on this kind of like war path i mean i was still Hey, how's it going? Still a nice guy, but internally, I was on this war path of seeking approval. And the crazy thing, Kelly, is my peak depression moment was when I actually got to the top of the mountain <laughs> because it was like, oh shit, yeah. the thing's still there. Oh, so you like, thought by having success. I guess I thought I would get to the top of the mountain. I'd be like, oh, finally. Yeah. Isn't that I have interesting? good and bad news. And it's the <laughs> same piece of news. So <laughs> do the Why math. Do the it math. doesn't solve it. The okay. thing is deeper than that. It's go, you got to go all the way in. And I'm, I'm not saying I'm still trying to go further in. So mm -hmm. the pri the practice of the ice helps me go in, helps me okay. go further in. And it's great news because, you know, we all have to find a way to approach what we're doing in our lives with love, acceptance, surrender. The ice taught me surrender. Like, really, man. I mean, I had a I had an experience in that 15 minute bath where I thought I'm not going to make it through this. And then I had this message come in front of my face that said, let it break you. And then I did. And that's when. The circle came and the light opened and mm -hmm. I went into it. And I I have a friend who's a midwife. She has a podcast about wh where women share their their childbirth experiences. Really beautiful, deep podcast. Mm -hmm. um, it's called Milk Trails. It's my friend Haley. <clears throat> and she was sharing her own story of her own birth. Uh, sorry, her, her the birth of her child. And I, you know, I know... I know their child and I, and so it was really cool to hear and I'm driving and I had to, I had to pull the car over cause she goes, she's like, she's talking about the pregnancy, the, the, uh, the labor. And she's like, you know, and the baby wasn't coming. And I like know enough about doing this because now I'm analyzing myself and I'm kind of wondering what's wrong. And then I, I was in my analytical mind and then I just got this message and it said, let it break you. And I, I, I'm listening to this driving and I pulled the car over and I just was like, wow, like the, that's what the ice, the ice yeah. gave me the same exact wow. words. Wow. And I'm not trying to claim that I, anything is more difficult than childbirth. I, I'm, I'm not saying that just to be that's clear. That's number one. 
<laughs> I know. I ha- it would have to be. But so I and I'll never know what that feels like. But it, I, it was the closest yeah. I think I'll it's, get. I, absolutely. Yeah. So the it's fact that you can you. the fact that you can give yourself a chance to go. I, I don't even know how to explain it. Like the the cold to go deep. It'll it'll bring you into your body. It will scare you, and if you stay in it and you accept it and you surrender, it will teach you strength. It will teach you love. It will teach you compassion. And it will heal. And that shit it's, is fucking it's an ancient healing. Free. <laughs> well, thank you, honey. Yeah. Thank you so much for for all of this. For, Sorry for the everything cursing. you're saying. Oh, please. <laughs> um, it's my show. <laughs> We, uh, I was, what, tell us, uh, when does your concert take off and um, what cities, I mean, yeah. where can they find your information? Well, Theokatzman.com. There you go. Yep. My name is Theo Katzman. And if you type that in and put .com after it, like you've got there, um, you'll see a poster of, um, all the dates Great. and you can click on that and you can come to a, a concert and it's going to be for my new album, which is. I think my best work yet. I, can't, and I haven't even heard the new album. I'm so I know. excited to hear it. You've heard, uh, you, you have I not heard I've any heard. of it. No, you, I, but I hear- played, I've played you some of the songs acoustically yeah. on your piano here, right. but, okay. but um, I, I think you're going to love it. And even if you don't, I think you're going to know, you're going to feel what I'm oh, putting I'm into gonna it. I'm going to love it. I'm going to love it. I, and it de- when it, it comes out, I'll post it up here. Cool. For everybody. It deals with these themes, you know, it's like, um, it's it's really my journey over the last couple of years of of uh, of dealing with these themes and starting to really dig into some of this healing work and really try to develop more of an intimacy with my own pain and that's that's another thing with the cold is it's just it hurts it hurts but it's yeah. you know it's possible to experience pain without suffering okay so, wow wait, here's yeah. a question lindsay yeah. says when and when is that album coming? <laughs> She's, I think, your biggest fan. Oh, is this Lindsay? Lindsay. Hey, Hi, Lindsay. Lindsay. How's it going? <laughs> when, when? Um, I have not announced that yet, so she's going, wait a minute. Yeah. That's good. That's very <laughs> That's good. good, Lindsay. And then Chris Ward says, come back to Dublin, because I know you're doing a lot of work in Dublin. Oh, yeah. Dublin. I've just, I've just. Or Limerick in, Dublin in Ireland. And, um, yeah. I'll, I'll be in Ireland. Yep. I haven't, I haven't, uh, we're, we're working on that. Um. When when Lindsay is the album coming out, I don't know yet, but it's I'm aiming it's gonna it's gonna be in January is the feeling I have. Yeah. Good. Okay, perfect. So, well, and I hope you come back again, Theo. It's such a pleasure oh, yeah. to have you here. Honor. Oh my god. Oh, I'm just And by the way, you guys are in great hands with Kelly. She is one of the beacons in my life, a light in my life, always has been, has really had my back in deep always. moments that moment nobody else was, was witness to. The moment he was born, always. Thank you, always, babe. Always. I, love I you. recognized him immediately. Yeah. I love you too, sweetheart. All right, I will we'll meet up in the back. Thanks everybody. Blessings, everyone. See you. Don't forget Monday everybody with James. Take care everybody. Bye. Cheers. You've been listening to Ask Me Anything featuring spiritual medium and psychotherapist Kelly White.